Of all the different techniques you can use to deal damage to your opponents, slamming your own head into their head is probably one of the last that may occur to you. But despite that, headbutts seem to naturally blend into almost all forms of combat, to the point where it's at times very difficult to tell if a headbutt was intentionally thrown or not. But it's hard to argue over something like, say, an ear bite. Headbutts were legal for a brief period of time in several MMA organizations, but the level of competition and technical skill for most practitioners was nowhere near where it is today, making it difficult to tell how headbutts might be implemented against martial artists with modern day defense. However, there is a style of martial arts gaining in popularity that not only allows headbutts, but embraces them. In Burmese boxing, fighters incorporate headbutts into their techniques and strategies, using them extensively for clinch work, even from long range. Aside from a few other interesting and particularly brutal rule changes, Burmese boxing is very similar to Muay Thai. What's interesting is that, while headbutts drastically alter certain signature Muay Thai moves, they've only served to enhance others. First, let's take a look at how headbutts work as an entry into an exchange. The most effective way to score a headbutt from outside is off of head movement. Entering while changing your head slot is one of the very basics of most styles, but it serves a double purpose here, protecting your head from strikes and loading it up to strike. Here the fighter ducks into an exchange, crouching to load up power and then propels himself upward to score a knockdown. The most recent breakdown on Henry Armstrong provides a number of examples of how effective head movement could potentially lead to KOs. Since headbutts are illegal in boxing, Armstrong instead drove his head into his opponent's chest and used it to wrestle. But he would sometimes slide his head from his opponent's chest or shoulder to their head in order to break their posture. Here's an example of him using his head to position his competitor's chin into the path of his hook punch. These techniques could easily transfer to powerful headbutts with minor modifications. But, get it? Armstrong's signature crouch would do very poorly against kicks, knees, and downward elbows. So instead of ducking or weaving, slipping from side to side like Tyson would seem to work better. And there are some examples of this in Burmese boxing. Side to side movement also serves to load up power by shifting weight from foot to foot. Along the same lines of thinking, headbutts also make for an insanely fast counter, as there's little need for preparatory motions. If you can get offline, either through footwork or head movement, a headbutt is a valuable weapon that requires little to no preparation. It's also a great deterrent to stop opponents from charging in, forcing them to take a more cautious approach and maintain some distance. Headbutts can also be paired with other classic techniques. For example, knees and uppercuts can encourage the opponent to raise their head, making them more susceptible to butts. Here we see one fighter crouch down to try to protect himself. The other fighter throws a knee, forcing him to abandon his crouch, and then drives his head forward to connect with a headbutt. Another technique that's still effective is guard manipulations. They can clear the way for headbutts the same way they clear the way for punches. After all, it's extremely difficult to control three weapons with only two limbs, so practitioners tend to be open to at least one form of attack at all times. This makes controlling the opponent's guard economically of the utmost importance. All of these long to mid-range techniques are effective, but close range is where the headbutt really shines, greatly altering the dynamics of the clinch. The double collar tie, or plum, is a tried and true Muay Thai technique, but headbutts make it an incredibly risky endeavor the movement opens a fighter up, giving their opponent a direct line of attack. In this way, a headbutt from close range is a perfect example of the closest weapon to nearest target principle. A skilled Burmese boxer can time his headbutts to his opponent's punches or elbows, taking advantage of the brief opening in their guards. Because of this, some fighters try to avoid clinch work altogether. They opt to instead hold their opponent until the ref breaks them, rather than grapple to set up attacks. But this strategy can easily backfire. Once again, the fighter can headbutt his opponent as he tries to pull him into the clinch. If a fighter who prefers headbutts gets trapped in a clinch, framing the opponent's head as soon as possible seems to be the most effective strategy. Cross-framing off the opponent's head creates space to land more headbutts. In fact, framing off the opponent's shoulder or chin seems to have effectively replaced collar ties as the most dominant infighting position in this system. Framing is especially effective when used in conjunction with punches and elbows. 
What conclusion can we draw from all this? Well, overall, headbutts appear to be a powerful weapon, but there's still only one powerful weapon amongst many. They change the dynamics, but don't limit or take away from the impact of 90% of the remaining techniques. While effective, they're most likely banned from most combat sports because they cause too many cuts, ending fights prematurely. Rather than, say, being overpowered or potentially permanently damaging, like eye pokes or eye gouges. I personally enjoyed this addition to the fights I watched, and I would recommend checking out Burmese boxing. I will caution that the talent pool isn't on the same level as Muay Thai, and I did see a few questionable knockouts. Stay tuned for Ali vs. Frazier 2, and suggest any fighters, techniques, or fights you'd like to see broken down. I've linked my books on power and footwork below, and if you buy the ebooks together today, you'll get one book half off. From the Modern Martial Artist, this has been David Christian, wishing you happy training.